So I'm going to talk about numbering systems. Numbering systems are um, easy, yet e easy once you're comfortable with them, and they're just for, at first hard to get used to, but once you're used to them, um, they're easy to deal with. For example, we always use the decimal system. And the system I want to go over now is really the binary system. And I'll explain why computer people use the binary system. And then there's one that's pretty common called the hexadecimal system. That's the one where you see numbers that go, they have digits 1 through 0 through 9 plus letters A through F. And there's a reason there's a connection between this system and this system. So computers have a need for using this system, which we're not used to. This is one we are used to. And then this will be a, a simple way to represent the symbols of this system. So I'm going to go through systems you're probably used to that are much harder than the ones we want to cover, but the, the ones we want to cover are going to seem hard because you've never seen them before. But anyway, the way a numbering system works, I got this definition from Wikipedia, is you pick what's called a radix. So in mathematics, a mathematical numbering system, the radix or the base is the number of unique digits you use to represent numbers. Starting at zero and then counting your way up to whatever the radix is, that's how many symbols we use. So for example, the, and this is also from Wikipedia, um, the decimal system, which is the most commonly used system, it has a radix of 10. So we use 10 symbols, the symbols 0 through 9, and we just keep using those symbols to keep count of numbers. So if you were hearing the decimal system for the first time, it would seem very confusing. But if you wanted to come up with any other numbering system, all you have to do is pick R, I'm using R for radix, R unique symbols, give them an order from lowest to highest, and then the way the numbering, uh, the, the sequ sequentially list the symbols from lowest to highest uh, for all the R systems, uh, for all the R symbols, and then the way you would count is you go from the lowest number to the highest. Once you hit the highest, the next number after that would be to go back to zero, and then add one to the column to the left. Right, so you're used to this, obviously. So for example, after 9 comes 1, 0. Right, the number after 9 in the decimal system becomes 1, 0. So we go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now we're at the last symbol. So we reset it back to the lowest symbol and add 1 to the column after it. And just keep doing that. So once you get comfortable, that's, that's most radix based systems. So for example, the the decimal numbering system, if you were hearing this for the first time, this would seem like a crazy system. It would take a long time to, to learn it. And maybe when you were a kid in first grade, this was took a while to learn. But basically, we have 10 symbols for the decimal system. These are the 10 symbols. Now, we have to come up with an order to say this one's bigger than this one, and this one's bigger than this one. So our order is, and I'm going to, the reason I'm going through this, you're probably sitting here going, we know this symbol. This, why are you teaching us this? I just want to go over the method because we're going to do the same exact thing, but not for 10. We're going to do it for different numbers. Same exact pattern. So now we're saying this symbol is smaller than this symbol, this symbol is smaller than this symbol, and we go all the way through. So we now have an order. And once we have this system, we can now count. So it'd be, this would be 0, this would be the next one, next one, next one, next one. We'll go all the way until we run out of symbols. We've used up all the symbols. The next number after this, we reset this one back to the first one, but then add one more to the column next to it. So we get one zero, and then one one, one two. And we go like this until we get to one nine. The next number after one nine, we reset this one back to zero, and add one more to this one. And then we get this symbol and so on. Right, so this pattern makes sense. Then a little later on, we get to the point where we have both of these have hit that limit. So the next number after this is we add the 9 is at the maximum value. We set this back to 0 and add 1 to this one, which this one is now at the maximum. So we set this back to 0 and then add 1 to the next one after it. And that gives us this symbol. And so on. This is a numbering system you're used to. So if we just, if we change the radix, don't use 10 symbols if we use 8 or 15 or whatever. 
it's a and follow the same exact pattern you're used to it. It's just gonna you're gonna see numbers that are strange to you, but this is one you're used to. <clears throat> um, okay, and so why out of all the different ways we could have done this, why do we well, most of the world use the radix of ten? Nobody really knows. This goes way back like before the ancient Greeks. They've been using this system. And the guess is that human beings have ten figures. So we used to like counting on our fingers, and then when you use up all your fingers, you add one to somewhere, you write it down, and then start using your fingers again. Nobody knows how the system, the decimal system of using a radix of ten got started, but everyone knows it, so we keep using it. Okay, now here is a much more difficult system, but you're used to it. <clears throat> this also goes back to, I think, originally started with the Greeks, and now a lot of Europe doesn't use this system anymore, but the United States still uses it. But the inches, feet, and yards system. This is far more complicated than the binary and the hexadecimal system. You know, but we'll probably be comfortable with this because we're used to it. Whereas binary and hexadecimal, if you're seeing it for the first time, might seem confusing, even though it's much easier than this. But you'd have to know that inches count up to 12. So it's not a radix of 10. It doesn't go up to 10 and then start over. It goes up to 12 and then starts over. Feet count up to three. So one yard equals three feet. And then counting, counting in inches, feet, and feet and yards. So for example, we would go one inch, two inches, all the way up to 11 inches. And then after 11, we would go, we would add one to the column next to it and go back to zero. So we'd go to one foot, zero inches. Then we'd go to one foot, one inch. And we'd start adding one to this until we hit the limit again. So in this case, inches counts up to the highest one is 11, and then it goes back to zero. So then we go to two feet, zero inches, two feet, one inch, two feet, and we work our way up to two feet, 11 inches. And now this 11 goes back to zero. We add one to this thing. But when this one hits three, so there's a lot of memorizing in this system, right? Three feet is a yard, 12 inches is one foot. It's not like everything is 10, 10, 10, 10. This is a much more complicated numbering system, but yet we're all used to this. So after two feet, 11 inches, the next thing is the inches goes back to zero. We add one to two feet, which brings us to three feet, but there is no, you know, if, if we always convert, convert three, feet into, three feet into one yard, the next thing would be one yard, zero feet, zero inches. And the next one after that would be 101, 102, until this one hit the maximum number. Then you add, you go back to zero and you add one, right? So this one you use, this, if you had to learn this, the first time learning this, this would be far more confusing than binary or hexadecimal, the one I want to go over tonight. Because the one I want to go over tonight, <clears throat> we keep counting up to some number, and then when we hit that number, we add one and go back to zero. And it always stays the same like in the decimal system. Once the lowest column, once that gets up to nine, it becomes zero, you add one to the next one. That one goes up to nine, it go back to zero, add one. It's always, it always goes up to uh, 10 symbols every time. In this case, it's 12, then after 12 symbols, you add one, and then that goes up to three, and then you add one. So you had to memorize 12 and three, and then just get used to that. So this is a, like I say, this is a more complicated system, but it's comfortable to us because we're used to it. So then if you wanted to start converting from one system to another, you could have questions like this. Um, how many inches is two yards, two feet, and four inches? So you'd have to do things like this. Well, two yards equals two times three feet, and each foot is 12 inches. So two yards equals 72 inches. Then the two feet, this part, the two feet, oh, this should be two times 12 inches. This should have been a two. Sorry about that. That equals 24 inches. And then the four inches is just four inches. And now we add all these up. So that would end up being 100 inches is the total. So two feet, I'm sorry, two yards, two feet, four inches is the same as 100 inches. So we're converting this yards, feet, and inches thing into the decimal equivalent. 
the decimal equivalent is 100. Okay, so as you imagine, you could come up with many different numbering systems, and then the idea is to convert them to each other. Here's another very complicated numbering system, much more complicated than binary and hexadecimal, but you're comfortable with this because you're used to it. And if you've seen this for the first time, this would take a lot of memorizing and getting used to. But it's the hours, minutes, seconds one. And this one's used all over the world because time isn't something you're just making sets of in powers of 10. So uh, it's used everywhere. <clears throat> so 60 seconds equals a minute, 60 minutes equals an hour, 24 hours equals a day, seven days equals a week. This keeps going. But now an interesting question, what time comes after? I'm using uh, the 24-hour clock here. So what time comes after 23.59.59? Once, so this is the 23rd hour, the 59th minute, and the 59th second. So one second later, if this was a clock that was running, what would be the next number? So again, it's a numbering system. This is just, the, I want, just want us to get used to the pattern. Whatever is here, you add one to it. If this is the maximum, this goes back to zero, and then we have to add one to the next one. If this is the maximum, this goes back to zero, and we have to add one to this one. If this is the maximum, and the way hours works, I'm sorry, if hours is 23 is the highest value we can go to after that, it goes back to zero. So this would go back to zero, and if we did have a fourth number where we were counting days, like how many days and hours and minutes, we would add one to, if, if there was days after this, we'd add one to that. So basically the pattern is, of all the different things this can count up to, when it hits the maximum value, the one right after it, is go back to the lowest value, but then add one to the next column, just to keep track of the fact that we went through the whole set. Okay, so <coughs> if, if I was to ask you in time, Given this number, what would be the time one second later? You'd come up with this answer probably pretty quickly, right? Right? Without much hesitation. And it's because you're used to it. If this was being explained to you for the first time, well, this thing goes up to 59 and then goes back to zero. This one also goes up to 59, but this one only goes up to 23. It's like, why 59, 59, and 23? But it's just something we've gotten used to. Okay. So, you start to realize there's many different numbering systems. And, well, you know, here's an example of how to convert some one numbering system to another. So we're converting hours and minutes to decimal. The hours minute system to decimal system. So if a movie is two hours and ten minutes long, then how many minutes is that? So if two hours becomes two times 60 minutes, it's 120 minutes, plus the extra 10 minutes, this movie would be 130 minutes. So this is the decimal system number, 130. And in the hours and minutes system, it would be 2 and 10. So 210 becomes 130. 210 and hours and the hours minutes system becomes 130 in the decimal system. So again, this is just something we're used to. So when we get to binary and hexadecimal, it's an easier system, but you're just not used to it. It's a simple matter of getting used to it, but it's actually easier than doing like hours, minutes, seconds, or yards, feet, and inches. <clears throat> the binary system, okay, so here's the new system. Maybe, maybe you haven't seen this one before. The binary system has a radix of two. So there's only two symbols in the whole numbering system. The two symbols are this one and this one. And then that's it and we have to have an order. This symbol is smaller than this symbol. So what's the advantage to using this system? Well, there's a low number of symbols to memorize. Right? When you were a kid, you had to learn the symbols 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Ten symbols you had to remember. This is really easy. It's two to remember, 0 and 1. The disadvantage is these numbers are going to be huge because we only have two symbols. So but we're going to follow the same exact pattern. And the only reason it'll seem strange is because you're not used to it. But other than that, it's just the same exact pattern as before. And it's easier than the hours, minutes, second because it's the same, it's the same maximum every time. 
So here's our first number, zero. The next number after that is, well, this is not the maximum symbol, so we just go to the next symbol. This is a one. Now, what comes after this number in the binary system? We don't have a symbol for two. So what we do, this is the maximum symbol. That's the lowest one, that's the highest one, and that's it. It only has two symbols. So this goes back to zero, and then we add one to the next column. So this is the way you represent two in binary. So this is a zero, this is a one, and now all of a sudden we're out of symbols and we have to go set this one back to zero and add one to the next one. Now what comes after two? Well this is not the maximum symbol, so we can just make that a one. So this is three in binary. And now what comes after this one in binary? Well, this symbol is the maximum symbol, so we reset this one to zero and add one to this one. Adding one to this one, this is the maximum symbol, so this gets reset to zero, and we add one to the next column. So this is a four in binary. So the two things we want to learn tonight is the binary system and then this other system called the hexadecimal system, which is just kind of shorthand for binary. But kind of the key tonight is the binary system. So if this is 4, the next one after this, this is not the lowest symbol, so we can just make this a 1 and this is 5. Now, if we want to add 1 to 5, we, this symbol is the highest one, so we reset this to 0, add 1 to this column. And this is a 0, so this just becomes a 1, and we're done. 1, 1, 0 is the way to represent the 6 divided. Now, if we want to add 1 more to that, since this is not the highest symbol, we just make that a 1. So 1, 1, 1 is a 7. So the decimal equivalent, 1, 1, 1 in binary is equivalent to 7 in the decimal system. Now here, if we want to add one more to this, we add a 1 to the 1, that sets it back to 0. So we add one more to this one, but that's, this is the maximum symbol, so this gets set back to 0, which means we have to add one more to the next column. This one becomes a two. That gets set to zero. We add one to the next column. So this is an eight. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sorry. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this would just keep going. The thing is, in order to represent the number eight in decimal, we need four symbols. So these numbers, these very small numbers are going to get take up a lot of space with this system. But it's just for, for right now, it's just for some odd reason we decided to use a radix of 2 instead of 10. Okay, so just for example, if you wanted to, if you had a kind of a bigger number and you said, what's one more to this? We'd say, what's the binary number that comes after this one? This is a 1, so this becomes a 0. That's this 0. And then we add 1 to this one. This is already at the maximum, so this becomes a zero. That's the zero. And then we add one to this column. This was a zero, so adding one to it makes it just become a one, and everything else after that could be left alone. Right? So you kind of get the idea of how to count, and you just, it's just a different numbering system. The smaller the radix, the smaller the number of symbols there are, and then but then, so the numbers get wider because you're using less symbols. If we used a lot of symbols, if we made up a million symbols, well then, if we had a million different symbols, then we could represent a million numbers with, with just one symbol. But there'd be a lot of memorizing. You'd have to memorize all these symbols and what order they're in. <clears throat> so you could kind of see there's a trade-off. You don't want to use a numbering system that has a very small radix because the numbers get big. They, they take up a lot of space. If you use a very high radix, it's too much stuff for us to remember. So we're kind of looking for a little somewhere in the middle. But now here's a different numbering system called the hexadecimal system. So hexa means uh, 16. That's kind of a strange name, hexadecimal. It means like it's a 16 and a 10, and it's, it's just a base 16 uh, numbering system. So anyway, we have 16 different numbers. Uh, I'm sorry, 16 different symbols. 
and we have to come up with an order which ones are bigger than the other. So what they decided to do was, well, we're used to the idea of the symbols one through nine. As human beings, we're used to this. So when they came up with this system, they said, well, we need nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We need six more symbols, just any symbols. They could have been Greek letters or pound signs or stars. It could have been any symbols. And they decided to take the first six letters out of the alphabet, the, the Roman alphabet. <coughs> Okay, so these are our 16 symbols. So what we're going to do is, it's the same idea, we just, we just keep counting up to after 9, we don't, go to, we don't go to 1, 0, we just go to A, then B, then C, then D, then E, then F, and then after F, we go to 1, 0, and start the whole system over again. So what's the advantage of this? Well, it takes up less space, the disadvantage is there's more symbols than 10 for us to memorize. So far, with our decimal system, which we've used our whole lives, 10 symbols were pretty good. We memorized all 10 symbols and which ones are bigger than the other. That's not too hard. Now we have to add in six more symbols. And just remember that after 9 comes A and after A comes B. Once you have that memorized and you're kind of comfortable, this numbering system becomes comfortable. So counting in hexadecimal goes like this. <coughs> We go through the first round of symbols, after 9 comes A, after A comes B, after B comes C, after C comes D, after e, D comes E, and after E comes F. At this point, what comes after F? Well, we, we want to add one more to it. We're out of symbols. So this goes back to zero, and then we add one to the next column. So this is the next number after F. So it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, this is 16. So this is the only part that's just a matter of getting used to. It. This is the way you represent 16. This is hexadecimal for the decimal value 16. And then it's 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 24, 25, 26. So after 1, 9 becomes 1A, because A is the symbol after 9 and then 1B, and then 1C, and then 1D, and then 1E, and then 1F. Now, F, we've hit the limit. So this goes back to zero, and then we add one to this column. So after 1F becomes 2, zero. And this would be how you represent the number 32. <laughs> so it ends up being, when you do the conversion, it's two times the, the radix. This is two times 16, which is 32 plus zero. This number, for example, this is 2 times 16, which is 32, plus 8. This would, 2, 8 in hexadecimal would equal 40 in decimal. Okay, so it's just two numbering systems, two new numbering systems. We're used to more complicated ones, like the feet, yards, feet, and inches is more complicated than this. And the hours, minutes, seconds is more complicated than this. But the only thing new, the only reason why you have any trouble with this is we're just not used to it. So just to do a practice one, what is the next hexadecimal number? And that's always the nickname for a hexadecimal is hex. What hex number comes after 39F? And the answer would be, well, F is the highest symbol. So this goes back to zero. We then add one to this column. What comes after nine? A comes after nine in hexadecimal. So this would become a zero, this would become an A, and now A is not the highest one, so this three can stay alone. So hopefully this was a little bit of an interesting example. So it's three A zero is the number right after three nine F. And again, this just sounds strange the first time you're hearing it. Other than that, this isn't too strange. So so we just we reviewed number systems that we that we're comfortable with. Now we're seeing a number system that we're not comfortable with, and then saying, well, why are we, why are we wasting our time talking about a number system we've never seen before? And the answer is, why do we use the binary system? So I'll answer the why do we use the binary one first, and then the hexadecimal one second. So the binary system we use is because computers run on electricity. 
and electricity is either flowing through parts of the computer or it's not. So it only has two values, like on or off. The electricity is either on or off. So if you want to represent a number in a computer and it's running on electricity, the only way you can do it is put a series of memory cells and either turn the electricity on or off. So numbers and then every character you ever type in a computer is just a collection of numbers. So to do that, we have to represent it with electricity, and electricity is either on or off. So we need a, a numbering system that represents parts of the computer um, and can only have two symbols. They don't have to be the symbol zero and one. That's just the way that we, as human beings, represent the electricity is either on or the electricity is either off. Generally, a one means the electricity is on and a zero means the electricity is off. So why would we then use the hexadecimal system? The hexadecimal system is basically due to the fact that binary numbers are too big. There's too, many, there's too many zeros and ones to represent a small number. So we'd like to have some kind of a shorthand. And it's kind of complicated to convert to the decimal system. If we convert to, if we take four zero or one um, symbols, which we're now going to call bits in a computer. They call those bits, a zero or a one in binary. Every group of four binary symbols is exactly equal to one hexadecimal symbol. So let me, I think I have a chart of those two together. Okay. So we kind of went through this before, but this is the decimal column. So this is decimal 0 through 15. And binary goes 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. 1, 0, 1. We went through a chart something like this, and we got down to 15. And then in the hexadecimal equivalent would be these things. We go down to 9, and then we go A, B, C, D, E, F. Well, it turns out that every one of these, 0, zero through F, exactly maps to a combination of four of these. And these ones that don't, have the, the ones that only have two digits, just imagine two zeros, or enough zeros on B left side to make it a four digit number. <clears throat> so any group of four bits can be represented by exactly one hexadecimal symbol. So the reason we use hexadecimal is it's shorthand. It's shorthand for binary. The reason we use binary is because computers run on electricity. And the reason we went to hexadecimal is to represent these big strings of zeros and ones with less symbols. Then you might think, well, why didn't we pick a higher system than the hexadecimal system? Why didn't we pick like 100 symbols or 1,000? It gets to be complicated because there's too many symbols you have to memorize and memorize which ones are bigger than the other ones. So hexadecimal is probably as high as we want it to go without hurting our brains too much. OK, so then just a little review of using these numbers. Um, in the decimal system, if you do powers, this would be the radix is 10, 10 to the 1 is 10, 10 to the 2 is 100, 10 to the 3 is 1,000, 10 to the 4 is 10,000, and so on. This stays the same in any radix based system. In binary, 2 to the 1 is, this is how we would represent 2 in binary, and that's uh, 2 in decimal. 2 to the 2 is a 4, just like here. To the, the radix to the power of 2 is written like this. The radix 2 to the power of 2 is written like this in binary, which is 4 in decimal. 2 to the 3 is written like this in binary, 1, 0, 0, 0, which is an 8 in decimal. 2 to the 4 is a 1 with 4, zero, four zeros, which is in binary, and that's a 16 in decimal. So now we start to see if if we're talking about computer components, chances are how big they are or how fast they are are going to now end up being powers of 2. It's going to be either you know 2 or 4 or 8 or 16 and so on. So for example, the iPods that are out now, iPads that have come out. Does anyone have an iPad? No. But anyway, right now they're coming out in 16, 32, and 64 gigabytes. But you'll, and everything will always be quoted in powers of two in, in computers. 
And we gave a mention that at the end of this. So, um, yeah, actually, here's where I started. This is kind of the chit chat when you're buying a computer. Um, everything's in megas and gigas and now terabits. But anyway, um, 2 to the 10 is equal to in binary. If I kept the chart on the last slide going, it would be exactly, now I changed the colors up here because I grouped them into sets of four bits because I just wanted to show the correlation between hexadecimal and binary. But anything where we would need 10 bits to represent, it would be 2 to the power of 10. And this is the binary representation for it, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, that's the binary. This is what it happens to equal in decimal, the decimal value. Now there's a direct correlation between binary numbers and hexadecimal numbers. We take this group of four, so that first group, that could be a symbol between zero and f, and four zeros is equal to a zero, so that's that zero. These four zeros is this zero, and then there's a, you know, imagine a zero here, zero, one, zero, zero, we said was the way to represent the, num the decimal number four. And the hexadecimal equivalent to four is also four. Right? Zero through nine is exactly the same, and then 10 becomes A and 11 becomes B. <clears throat> so this is the way, this is the hexadecimal representation of this binary number. So you see how this is a really big number taking up a lot of space, and this is only three symbols. This, would, this one is four, eight, nine, ten. 11 symbols can be represented with three symbols. 11 binary symbols can be represented with three symbols. And then those are always called kilo or k. So kilowatts, you know, or uh, well, there's no there's no computer components that come out with killer anymore, right? Memory's always mega or giga now. Nobody's. I don't think there's any killer anything left. But uh, 20 years ago, everything was killer something. 16 kilobyte memory. Okay, and then the next interesting power is 2 to the 20. In decimal, that happens to be 65,536. But in hexadecimal, now the reason I didn't write the binary one is because it would be 20 zeros. There would be one with 20 zeros. So that would have taken up like this much space. So I didn't bother writing it because now it's so big, it's like annoying to write. But this is the decimal equivalent to it. And then these right here, 1, 2, 3, Six symbols can represent a 20 symbol number. Six hexadecimal symbols. Uh, yeah. Six hexadecimal um, Okay, and then this ends up being uh, mega or 1M. Uh, okay, and then 2 to the 30 can be represented with this many to the third so this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven times four is twenty-eight bits. Thirty, thirty-one bits. So this is the the number of uh, symbols for a hexadecimal number would be one sixteenth as many as the binary version. And then 2 to the 30 ends up being 1 giga or 1 G. And then the next interesting one is uh, two, 2 to the 40, which is 1 tera. And I don't, does anything come after 1 tera? There's no products are really being made where they're quoting teras now. But you can get, when you buy a computer now, you could get a 1 terabyte hard drive. That's pretty common now. The speeds of the processors are not in teras yet but they're probably heading towards that direction. Okay, and then yeah, just some examples of how this is being used is you might buy a computer that has a four gigahertz processor. So hertz is speed related. You might, this is probably not common anymore. This was common maybe eight years ago. 256 megabytes of random access memory. They're all pretty much in gigas now. So if you multiply this by 2, this would be 512. And if you multiply that by 2, that would be 1,024. So that would be 1 gigabytes of hard drive. And hard drives are now way over 1 gig. 
and then, but you could, I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry, the main memory, the random access memory, is typically in the gigs now. You're not, you're not going to see too many 256 megabytes or 512 megabytes. Those were common numbers you may have heard. And like I say, all these numbers, these are all the megas, the teras, and the gigas, they're all powers of two. And then you can double that, or two of those, or four of those, or eight of those, and so on. 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512. Those are the common numbers you'll hear. And the reason is because they're all powers of two. And then an example might be the Apple iPad. Um, they're now available in 1632 and 64 gigabytes of memory. Depends on how much, how much movies you want to save or how much space you need. And for each increment from 16 to 32 is like $100 more, and 32 to 64 is another $100 more. So, and just to kind of show you that the converting, it's kind of, it's a, it's a numbering system that you'd have to remember, but um, if you wanted to, Excel is pre-programmed to handle these things. So let me open up an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, binary, all the binary text. And, open it up. and so if you wanted to just create a chart of numbers, let's say decimal. Excel, you could take a pattern like this, one, two, and then just copy it. That goes up to the, uh, let, me, let me do at least one more. Okay. And then if I wanted to do binary and the hexadecimal equivalent. cell is, in this cell, I could say this cell equals the, if you start typing in, so in Excel you can type in equals and then there's functions you could use, and when you start spelling it, Excel spells it out for you, but if I say, des, uh, if I say decimal, see this thing, decimal, the number two, B-I-N, it's decimal to binary, and then I'm just saying I want to use the value on C3. So this is basically, this formula is saying, for this cell, I want it to equal dec convert decimal to binary of what's next in the in the uh, field next to me, and then I just copy this. I can say copy and copy this pattern over here, and then say paste. So those are the binary equivalents to the number in the decimal column, and I can do the same thing for the hexadecimal. I can say equals decimal decimal to hex. now gives me the, the hexadecimal representation of those numbers. So, so this is the system you've been using your whole life, the decimal system. And this system and this system are the ones we talked about today. So all we're doing here is saying one is one, is one two is a one with a zero, three is a one with a one. And the hexadecimal version is the symbols going all the way up to F. And then once we get to F, we now go add a 1 to the next column and go back to 0. And that would just keep going. So the, uh, so and Excel is programmed to go back and forth between these two sets of symbols. So if you wanted to have a number like, oh, by the way, does anyone's initials Use the letters A through F only. First. You? First and last. Yeah, first and last. Yeah. Okay. What's that? Oh, really? Oh, okay. So, like, for example, um, so for example, <coughs> my initials are BB. And then if I wanted to know what is the decimal equivalent of that, I could say X to, dec to decimal. 
uh, this thing, and then it's 187. Okay, so like, what's for example, what's the, what's your initials? Yeah. Okay, so you'd be 186. <laughs> you'd be one more, right? Let me double check that. Yeah. And then if I can copy this. Yeah, you'd be 186. And you have three initials then. Uh oh. You don't want to know the decimal equivalent of your initials. So, but anyway, so it, could, it only works because these symbols go up to F. So if, if your initials go beyond F, this wouldn't work. But so, like, you know, if you're filling out an application, like for your for your, buying your phone, and they want you to sign the contract, and then they say like initial here, initial here, so you can just write 186 now because <laughs> that's your initials. <laughs> that's the binary equivalent of your initials. But anyway, <laughs> and then if like if you have all three, all three of the initials, you that could also. So basically, any any. Um, any symbols that are 0 to 9 or A to F have a decimal equivalent to that, and a binary equivalent to it. You could just make this chart go on forever. Okay.